Hi there, today we're learning about for loops. So before we jump into for loops, we're going to back up, we're going to review uh, a while loop, we're going to review a do while loop, and then we're going to learn how to create um, and set up a for loop. Today we're also going to learn uh, how to use the tab command in Java. Um, and before we start anything, uh, one thing that's very important that you have to understand about loops is that uh, loops always have to have a counter. You always want to set up a variable um, and I usually call mine int counter. Um, if you don't have a counter for your loop then your loop will iterate forever. It will go on to infinity. So it's always important to set up a variable um, uh, called int counter or something like that that keeps track of how many times your loop loops. So let's look at a while loop here. You'll notice that the first thing I do here is I've, I've got my int counter and I set it equal to 1. So I initialize int counter and then I've got my, my while loop statement, my expression right here. So while int counter is less than or equal to 5, do the statements in here. So while int counter is less than or equal to 5, it's going to do the stuff in here. So it's going to print to the screen, lost is the best show ever. And then right here we are incrementing the counter by one. So the first time that this loops that this loop happens, int counter is going to be one. Is one less than or equal to five? Well, yes, it is. So we're going to do the stuff inside this. So it's going to print uh, lost as the best show ever. And then we're going to add one to int counter. So int counter will become two. Is two less than or equal to five? Yes, it is. So we uh, print to the screen, lost is the best show ever, and then we add one uh, to encounter. Um, we'll, we will do this up until the point where encounter uh, is six. Um, is six less than or equal, or equal to five? No, it is not. So then we will not do the stuff inside here and we exit out of the loop. So this is an example of a while loop. Let's look at a do while loop. Notice with a do while loop, I also have a counter that I initialize. So I set my encounter equal to one do and then I've got my statements in here so uh, it's gonna we're gonna do the stuff that's inside uh, this loop and right here I have this while statement while encounter is less than or equal to five so the first time that we go into this loop we're just gonna go ahead and print to the screen lost is the best show ever and then we're gonna uh, add one to encounter so um, right right here this would become two uh, so is two less than or equal to five? Yes, it is. So then we would jump back in, back in here, and we would do this stuff again. Uh, so notice that with a do while loop, um, your your loop is always going to iterate once, at least once. Um, a do while loop is an example of a post test loop, and post test loops always iterate at least once, uh, whereas a pre test loop. Um, always will look at that expression and it might not iterate. Uh, for loops and while loops are examples of pretest loops. All right, let's look at a for loop and uh, see how we set that up. So notice I've got this for statement right here and then I've got the following in parentheses. So I've got my int counter equals one. So this is where I um, initialize my counter. And then I've got a semicolon. The next part is my expression. So this loop will loop while int counter is less than or equal to 10 and then I've got another semicolon and then right here I've got uh, my int counter plus plus I've got the part where I increment uh, my counter so the way that this works is um, the first time we go into the loop uh, the loop will read this you know uh, it'll initialize int counter and then we'll uh, look at the expression so is int counter less than or equal to 10 well is 1 less than or equal to 10 yes it is so we will do the statements inside here so we'll print to the screen loss is the best show ever and then once we reach the end of the statement we'll then increment uh, int counter by 1 so uh, the next time we do this the int counter will become 2 is 2 less than or equal to 10 yes it is so we'll do the statement in here and then we'll add 1 to int counter again we'll then you know, validate the statement in here, and we'll keep doing this until int counter is not less than or equal to 10. So once int counter becomes 11, we'll exit out of this for loop. And this is how you set up a uh, for loop in Java. So let's look at a uh, program real quick uh, that uses a for loop. So right here I've got a, uh, a class that's called crow3 underscore 050 example code and I've got my main method right here. The first thing that I do is I declare a variable. I've got my variable. It's called int counter. And the second thing that I do is I print two statements to the screen. I've got number backslash t backslash t number squared 
and then I've got a bunch of um, dashes. So if I run this program, watch what happens. So notice that when I run it, I've got number right here, and then I've got a I've got a bunch of space in between uh, this text right here, number and number squared. And on, underneath that, I've got my dashes. Notice that these backslash t, backslash t uh, commands, these are, uh, these basically tell Java to, uh, to create a tab. And that's what's going on here. So instead of having to, you know, do space, 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 space like this, all you have to do is do backslash t, backslash t, and it'll create uh, two tab areas for you um, whenever you print um, the, uh, the text to the command prompt. All right, so let's go ahead and let's set up a for loop here. So we're going to do for int counter equals one. So I'm initializing int counter, and I'm going to say while int counter is less than or equal to 10, do the stuff in the loop, and then at the end of the loop, I want int counter incremented by one. So I'm going to create my braces here. So inside here, I'm going to create uh, some code. I'm going to say system.out print line. And I want to print the counter to the screen. And then I want to um, have some space in here. So I'm going to uh, do backslash, backslash tab. And then I'm also going to print to the screen int counter times, I'm just going to move this down to the next line, int counter times int counter. So I'm squaring um, whatever int counter is. So let's go ahead and let, let's run this code. And here we go. Here's our code. Number, number squared. So these things print. And then I've got my for loop right here. So here is what is displayed uh, to the command prompt. Um, we basically uh, go through this for loop and we uh, you know, go through the iterations. And so we're displaying the counter and we're displaying the counter squared. And we do this all the way up uh, until 10. So 10 um, times 10 is 100. So what we have right now with this loop, um, with this for loop, this is a programmer control loop because we're saying, because uh, it's always going to iterate 10 times. What if we wanted the iterations to be based on the user? Um, let's say we allowed the user uh, to enter a number, and then the loop would, uh, you know, iterate depending on whatever number that user entered. Well, to do that, we would create a user-controlled loop. And here's how you do it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to import the scanner class, so java.util.scanner, and then I'm going to create my scanner object. Actually, I need to do it before here. So I'm going to say uh, scanner keyboard equals uh, new scanner system system dot n, and then I'm going to print the following to the screen. Uh, screen. I'm going to uh, print uh, system dot system dot system dot out print line. Enter the number of iterations. You can just use print right here, and uh, I need to create a variable. I'm going to put this in. I'm going to call this int times. So int times equals keyboard dot next int. So now I'm going to ask the user. I'm going to say, "Hey, enter the number of iterations," and I'm going to grab that information. I'm going to put it into int times. And instead of having the loop uh, loop 10 times, I'm going to have it loop whatever int times is, whatever this variable is. So now if I run this, it's going to say enter the number of iterations. If I type in 50 and press enter, the program will then give me um, the number of iterations that I, that I entered. So it's going to show me the counter and the counter squared 50 times. And this right here is an example of a uh, user controlled loop instead of a programmer controlled loop. So to back up and review, we learned about for loops, we uh, reviewed the following loops, and we also learned about the tab command. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you later.